morning. Uh, just kind of, I normally show people this, uh, this, you know, one of hundreds of things that, um, that the press, the media, TV write about me. Um, maybe because of the crimes I committed, the amount of money I earned. The police and uh, the media called me Britain's most prolific criminal. Well, people in here that don't understand what the word prolific means, it means that in the certain crimes I've done, I've done more than anybody else done. I was committing up to 8,000 burglaries a year. Um, I got into a lifestyle of crime, uh, which involved armed robbery. Um, I ended up doing two years uh, dealing heroin on the streets. Um, I've done 25 years in prison. 12 years of that was in solitary confinement. Um, the Times, um, the Times, on a Sunday, done a four-page feature. The Sunday Mirror offered twenty-five thousand pounds for that story, which I, I told them to get stuff. Um, and I gave it to the Times for nothing. Um, my book came out eight weeks ago, which is unbreakable. Britain's most prolific criminal. Um, and last year, this is. Uh, something that I done for Channel 4 program and the Sunday Telegraph done a whole page on it. These are my words, the place I belong was prison. I would not have released me. A simple reason is I wouldn't have released me from prison because for me prison didn't work. When I came out of prison all I'd done was planned another armed robbery, got back into burglary, drug dealing. Um, it didn't rehabilitate me. I've had many talks now in the prison system uh, rehabilitation for prolific offenders, does it work? Um, I have my doubts um, because in the talks I do in the prison system with 200, 250 because of security, that's about the maximum I can have in a group. Um, none of them have heard of crime addiction. Drug addiction, gambling addiction, alcohol addiction, they all recognise that, all of you have heard of that, but crime addiction is something that's missed. In the US it's addressed. Uh, they've got a 12-step program in a jail in California for people that have spent their life in and out of prison for a drug addiction, drug dealing, armed robbery, uh, knife crimes, you name it. And the system's failed. They started a 12-step program, which is like AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, it's just for today I won't commit a crime. And certain uh, steps that they follow. In 13 years, three people have re-offended in that program. Um, since doing it, some of the hardest criminals. Um, Canada have now started this program. I spent five years trying to get this program into the British prison system, but unfortunately we live, you know, about a thousand miles behind the US and Canada. Um, academics do not want things that's going to jeopardise their daily job and take their wage packet away. And the program I bring in is free of charge, don't cost nothing. So they, they prefer to, I believe, it's my opinion, they like to stick with the counsellors that tend to sit in a room, try to counsel people in the life they've got, and then they come back out and they re-offend and go back in and the counsellor's still employed. What a waste of money that you'll all be funding, by the way, because you're the next generation of taxpayers, yeah. and you'll be funding that. The papers don't tell you all of that, but um, people like me do go around schools and I am booked in conferences. I am now a crime referral officer for Hertfordshire Police, means anybody in Hertfordshire that gets arrested and goes into the cells and requests to talk to somebody about their criminal life, they can ask for me to come in and I can go in now. I've now involved in a work program for prisoners now that can come out during the day, go to work, get skilled up in engineering, catering, anything like that. And that's been mentioned this week in the House of Lords. David Cameron's requested a meeting with the judge that set the program up and I've been invited to come on as, onto the Board of Directors and run the Eastern Region of Prisons once that kick starts off. Which I think is great because I'm not academically gifted. I ain't a speaker. <coughs> I've never been to school. Uh, I learned to read. I learned to write. And um, it takes a lot of bottle for me to stand here in front of all of you and, and, and open up the life that I had. Um, so I'm going to start on, <coughs> on, on drug addiction. And uh, the real insight into drug addiction, we all know and we've all heard of heroin. We know what heroin is, it's an addictive class A drug. Um, it's rapidly, um, as Tony Blair said, is now an epidemic in this country. I think there's got to be up to at least 500,000 plus heroin addicts in this country. 
all going out, possibly committing criminal activity every day to subsidise their drug addiction. Um, I can talk about that because I sold heroin for two years. Um, and I had an insight into the life of what was inside somebody's home. And if I knocked on a door and went to somebody's house that was addicts, and I was serving them up heroin, I would go into that house, and this isn't an individual story, this is what life as a heroin addict is like. Um, I would go inside that house, or flat, wherever, and they may have two or three children. The, the baby would be urinating on the carpet or in the kitchen. There would be excrement in the, in the kitchen or on, in the passageway. Why did the baby not have a nappy on? Because nappies come to 5 99 I know I've got a two-year-old kid now. 5 99 for a packet of nappies. Add four pounds and a penny, that would buy another ten pound bag of smack. <laughs> right? That's it. Um, that's not really funny, is it? Unless you're that baby, of course, and you ain't got a nappy. Um, but uh, that's life as a heroin addict. Uh, they're selfish. They think of their self. They don't think of their family. Um, that's the life. That's the lifestyle. Mum and dad will be upstairs in bed. Heroin actually numbs everything out. It'll take everything away from life. Distress, everything. I actually asked an heroin addict once that worked with me for nearly 10 years, if I gave you enough heroin and put you into a prison cell, what would happen? He said, I'd stay there for the rest of my life and not want to come out. I said, you are having a laugh. He said, no, that's the life I would choose. That's what heroin does. So give two heroin addicts, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, enough heroin, they'll go upstairs in their bedroom, they'll get in bed, they'll hit the foil or inject and they'll sit there until it's all gone. And then they'll go looking for some more money to feed that addiction. The kids downstairs will have a cupboard, they'll look for food, that they will come, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll stay alive. They'll stay alive, they'll care about them, but first and foremost, heroin is the thing that they actually need to survive. The kids, well, heroin addicts, first of all, once they get into that addiction, they'll start on the vulnerable. It'll be family members, it'll be friends that trust them. These are the people that they'll go and rob because they know how to get into their houses where, there's, where their jewellery and everything is kept. So they'll rob them first. Then they'll get pushed out of that, that circle and they'll go into the criminal lifestyle. The criminal lifestyle then will take them out onto the streets. They'll choose many, many different ways to subsidise their drug addiction. That may be nicking from cars, it may be, it may be anything. It could be siphoning petrol, it could be shoplifting, it could be burglary, it could be armed robbery, it could be prostitution. Anything at all, they have to get that heroin. That will be the life that they go back into. And eventually they'll be arrested, social services will be informed, They'll do a check, a home check, obviously, home circumstance report for call, and they'll see the state of the kids. The kids may well be taken into care. Um, unfortunately, from what I've seen in this country, they're not taken into care. Because if you said there was 500,000 addicts, Steve, um, and that really meant out of 500,000 addicts, there's got to be somewhere in the region of a million children that are suffering indoors through their mother and father or boyfriend and girlfriend's addiction, social services could not cope. If there's 82,000 prisoners in prison and they're screaming that it's overcrowded, imagine another million kids coming into the care system tomorrow. So these kids are left with the addicts. Unless it really, really, they go into prison and the mum's still an addict and it, it kind of, then perhaps they will go into care. When they're going to care, better quality of life, three meals a day, fantastic, nice, nice bed, comfortable, clean. The thing is that these kids no longer have a mother and father. Uh, so to get them kids back, they've got to come out of addiction and address that lifestyle. Um, but believe me, not many of them are able to do it. The desire for heroin is very, very strong. That's heroin addiction. Uh, when I sold it for two years, to give you an example, because a lot of people think, in the talks that I do, in a lot of schools and colleges, that I've had sometimes, um, people think this is a boy's thing. It isn't a boy's thing, this is a girl's thing as well. Um, and I'll give you an example. 